If there is one topic that has been requested of me more than any other, it's gotta be TCP IP subnetting. Let's go ahead and demystify this topic for you. And as you know, if you're in information technology, this is a skill that you would need in like a CompTIA Network Plus environment. It's a skill you would need in CompTIA is A+, I believe as well. You would need it in something like CCNA. It's just something that you need to understand. Never mind your work in actual production networks where you would need to understand it. But I often find that instructors will launch into IP subnetting instruction much too quickly. They don't pause and make sure students understand two important whys. Why do we subnet? Why is it a thing? Why is it so important? And then the other why is, why do we have to study it so intensely? In this first part, let's get both of those answered. So when it comes to the why, the first thing I want you to understand is why we must do this. And let's paint a picture for you. Here is a typical small office, home office network. It might be just like yours. And if you go and look at your TCP IP addressing scheme, you're going to most likely find out that it's a 192.168 style of network. Uh, you might have 192.168.10, and you might notice that your subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Now, we'll certainly get into what all this means, but I just want you to realize something that this was picked for your small office, home office network because it shouldn't need to be subnetted. It is an addressing scheme that should be ideal for you in that this scheme allows you to have 254 total devices. Now, I'm a big tech addict, but even in my small office, home office environment, 254 addresses available is enough. Yeah, in fact, it's more than enough to accommodate my small office, home office network. But wait a minute here. What if we are in a headquarters environment and let's say we have the 10.0.0.0 network and a mask of 255.0.0.0, well, we have a big problem. <laughs> the addressing scheme that I'm showing you accommodates 16,777,215 or 14, excuse me, total devices. What is the issue here? We would never want to build a network like this where we have thousands of machines all in the same network segment. If you look at Windows as an example, Windows machines are tend to be really chatty. They're having broadcasts a lot. They're sending a lot of traffic by default. And we want about 50 machines in a segment of the network. Certainly not 16 million. Yeah, these days, segmenting networks has become more and more popular. Segmented networks are more secure, they're more optimal, they're easier to secure, they're easier to troubleshoot. It, the list goes on and on and on why we want to segment, or in our case, subnet our networks. So I hope this kind of paints that picture for you. Now, as you remember from my introduction, there's another big why here from students, and it's why in the world would I have to learn how to do something like this manually and understand manual subnetting when in the real world I can just go ahead and turn my attention to a subnet calculator. So here's that scenario we just saw with a what we like to call a 10.x network on the slash 8 or 255.0.0.0 subnet. And maybe someone that's very educated tells us, Anthony, all you need to do for your headquarters 
is use a slash 16 subnet mask. So we don't know what any of this means, but we're going to go to the calculator and we're going to say, all right, we need a slash 16 or 255.255.00 network and go ahead and do all this work for me. And sure enough, this tool says, okay, here's what all of your networks are going to look like. And it sets us up with exactly what we need to do if we want to experience this slash 16 network. Now, this is fine and good, but can you imagine, can you imagine doing this, having a calculator make all these calculations for you and then not understanding anything that it just did. I mean, this would give me nightmares. If I was building my network per the specifications of some cal calculator that was free online and not understanding any of it, it's just not the way to go. What we love to do is we love to fully understand subnetting what we're doing as we're doing it. And then once we fully understand it, we can avail ourselves of things like subnet calculators to make it that much easier to do the heavy lifting for us. It kind of reminds me of those individuals that will want to master the cloud and they don't have any IT experience that would be super tough to do because the cloud is all about IT. And if you don't understand IT, you're going to get up there and see a bunch of buttons you can click and be completely lost. So the why is very important. Embrace it, understand it. And if you're ready, join me in the second video where we will start breaking down this remarkably important subject of TCP IP version four subnetting. Thanks so much for joining me.